All right, Moses joining me on the desk. Now, it's brought, it was kind of brought to my attention that you were challenged to do that, and it has mm -hmm. been more than 24 hours. So well, actually, less than 24 hours. I think it's up. been more. I still more. have a 24 hour period. I still have within the time. You said that yesterday. That I didn't say that yesterday. It was late yesterday <laughs> when I received it. So, $100 coming your way, ALS. All right, let's turn our attention to sports. And I'm going to nominate you next, by the way. Right on the desk, 5 o'clock, nothing better. We'll do it. All right. All right, the teams have been set for a while now. It's down to the real thing. I don't know if they're going to be doing this ice bucket challenge, but uh, one of them will be dousing themselves in champagne. The other one crying themselves to sleep. Yes, the Border <laughs> City Blue Jays and Lord Mr. Twins look to make history. On either side, beginning tonight, now the Twins will go for their unprecedented sixth straight title while the Jays aim to win their first NSRBL crown and become the first team not named the Twins or Brewers to win it since 1999. Expect fireworks between these two? Most likely, but not of a kind in years past, according to Jays pitcher Clayton Ermo. He says the rivalry has more of a friendlier tone. Lots of, lots of the guys on the Twin, they used to play on the Twins that have kind of uh, got on some guys' nerves and all that. Uh, most of those guys are gone. The Twins are are a better team now, I think, than they were in past years, and uh, they have a lot of younger kids on the team, and and it's, uh, I personally, I think it's a better team to play than than the team they used to be. There's no love lost there. That's that's public knowledge. Um, you know, it's just it's just a rivalry. It's your hometown hometown rivalry. Uh, they want to knock us off. We want to win six straight. Uh, the storyline set. Stacy Walker has also been somewhat of a prognosticator, adding his prediction for the upcoming series. I called the Jays in three and Twins in three. This time I'm, I'm going to say Twins in two. First pitch goes at 6.15 from Legion Ballpark. Now moving on to Chucks, it all comes down to five days of racing. The Westridge JMC CPCA Pro Tour final kicks off in 24 hours time with drivers looking to either make the championship dash or simply qualify for Calgary next year. Now here are some of the headlines heading into Wednesday. The CPCA's final stop is nothing short of great storylines. Shane Nolan has been consistent this season, winning the first race of the year and continues to be at the top of every heat. He holds an 18.5 point lead over Brian Labakane, who enters his final Pro Tour final. Now Nolan knows he can't overlook any driver this late in the year. we got to make sure that we got a lot of work to do yet, so we're just going to look at it one day at a time and uh, do our thing every day and see, uh, see where we shake out in the standings so that we, uh, we know what barrel we're going to be getting. In the running for the most improved driver, Lane Bremner is showing signs of being a real force as his top horses are rested and ready to go. We're starting to get back some horses that have been off since Calgary, so uh, it helps out a lot when they're starting to get some of them horses back. It uh, gives you the run here on this long track. Chris Molly has made a charge up the standings, moving to fourth place after the Turtleford showing. Now from the Hunter, Molly is now the Hunted, with Vern Nolan and Jamie Labicane setting their sights for that final championship spot but it's a position Molly is comfortable with. Can't worry about the games or the what everybody's trying to do, beat me or whatever, that's what's the name of the game, so if I do my thing and the horses will do theirs. It could be a year of first for some drivers fighting for a spot in Calgary. The top 10 qualifying Dave Galloway looks to earn his first Rangeland Derby berth, excited but is keeping a level head. When I started into this business, it, it was a goal and uh, you know we, we're, we're striving for that. We have you know three and five and seven year goals. Um, and as much as it, uh, you know, I wish it was Saturday night and everything was determined, um, I still have to race one race at a time to get there. And it's been a tumultuous year for B.J. Carey, the loss of two horses and a disastrous Calgary Stampede. The saving grace is he's holding on to the final spot for the Rangeland Derby, putting a silver lining on what has been a dark season. It makes it for a long year. Um, I, nobody wants to be in this position, but uh, leaving Wahlberg, I, I knew that I was going to have to fight the rest of the year to, to stay in a Calgary spot. All right, the Irma Tigers open up the under-21 Fast Pitch Championships with a pair of wins. Yes, in convincing fashion. There we go. Today, they took on the 0-2 Blue Jays from Yorkton. Parker Mackay finished with six strikeouts in five innings of work, allowing one hit and one walk while Ambrose Ferkus led the offense with a pair of home runs and five RBI. The Tigers' next game is tonight against the Stratford Cubs from Ontario. And that is your first look at sports. Gerard Lampau has your weather details coming up. 
The Lakeland College men's soccer team has had a lot to mull over the last few seasons. Of course, last year's disappointment, dropped points, and failing to make the playoffs. This time around, the team has renewed optimism as they could feel they could be tops in the ACAC. You see 15 players return to the squad of 21, boding well for a team needing to fill in the holes left from the departing players. We're looking for more... Uh, for, for a core of our group to, to be back more experienced and to learn from uh, last year's mistakes. We're really itching. I mean, we want to prove that we, we deserve to host playoffs, you know, not just to... We, we, we deserve to host The wrestlers will play several preseason games prior to the start of the season. We will have a full story for you on Late Night. Now, 46 entries ranging from various age groups and skill sets took part in the 23rd annual Paul Douglas Tennis Tournament. Local players from here as well as far as Saskatoon were on hand for the three-day event. It's a way for those who enjoy the sport to meet up with fellow enthusiasts. The competition, the group I play in, the 3.5, it's got all range of players. So, and the more competition, the more better competition you face, the better you get. I want to see uh, everyone up here play some different people and have a lot of fun. And this is your first year at the tournament? Oh yeah. And just what do you think? It's a, it's great. The setup is probably um, the best part. It's amazing. And uh, now that you've made your debut, are you going to come back next year? For sure. Lloyd Tennis President Rod Choplin says the event has grown year after year and encourages those who might be interested to take up the sport. Well, just come out and play. Like uh, this is a, a tournament for everybody. We have a lot of fun here, and uh, you know we're inclusive, not exclusive. 